I'm Anil Kumar and in this series we are discussing how to find domain of functions. Here I have two examples where we look into square root function. The question here is write domain using interval notation f of x equals to square root of x square minus x plus 6 and g of x equals to 4 minus x square. Right? Now to find domain of radical functions the idea is that the reticent, whatever is inside the root, should always be non-negative. So we are looking for non-negative reticent. That's the whole idea. So it really means that for f of x, x square minus x plus 6 should be greater than or equal to 0. And for g of x, 4 minus x square should be greater than or equal to 0, right? That's what it means. So all the values which x can take are part of our domain, right? Now, to solve such quadratic equation, factoring is a good technique. The other way is you could use graph. In this case, it's easier to factor. Uh, 6, we need product of two numbers, 3 and 2, and negative x is their sum, negative. So we could write this as x minus 3 times x plus 2, right? So that is in factored form. Now, we know from here that it has zeros at x equals to 3 and at x equals to minus 2. Knowing these zeros, we could actually graph the function and find the solution, right? That's easy way of doing it. Or we could go for the interval test. So there are two methods from here. So we could do either uh, algebraic method or graph method. Right. So let's do algebraic method first, which is interval notation. Then I will sketch the graph over it and we'll get the solution, right? So algebraic method is by interval notation. So what we try to do here is that we just uh, test the values of the function in different intervals. How do we get those intervals? These are defined because of the zeros. A zero on, let's say this is your x, and let's say somewhere here we have y, or x somewhere in the y-axis. Then the zeros are the points where the graph can change from negative to positive or positive to negative. So we analyze the intervals which are made because of the zeros. Two zeros will give us three intervals. So we have zero at minus two. Let's say this is the zero at minus two. And then we have a zero at three. Let's say this is the zero at three. Because of these zeros, we have the interval minus infinity to minus two, and then from minus two to three, and from 3 to infinity, so 3 intervals. In these 3 intervals, we take test points. Test point in the first interval could be any number within this interval. Let's take it as minus 3. Test point here could be 0, and then we can take 5 as a test point, right? So what are we testing for? We are testing for product of these two. So you could just write both these factors together or you could write them one by one and then we can multiply and see the results. So let me write one by one which is x minus 3 and x plus 2. If I substitute minus 3 here it becomes negative 0 will be result into negative 5 5 minus 3 is positive 2 you get a positive sign. For x plus 2 negative 3 makes it negative 0 2 which is positive 5 plus 2 is 7, positive. Now, when you multiply these factors, what do you get? When you multiply these two negatives, you get positive. A negative and a positive is negative. Two positives results into positive. And therefore, the interval, when this product is greater than or equal to 0, is these two, correct? These two. Right. So that forms the domain of this function. Right? So we can write domain of this function as, let me write down the answer uh, right here, 
that the domain of this function is union of these two. So it is from, I mean, I should write minus infinity, the first interval, to minus 2. Minus 2 can be included, never include infinity, right? Union, you could say, or the other one, which is from 3 to infinity. So that becomes the domain of this particular function. Sketching was a faster way of doing it. This parabola opens upward with these two zeros. So, so you could sketch it like this. Clearly, you see that the parabola is positive in this interval, right? Which we found algebraically as our solution, right? So that becomes the domain. So that's a quick solution. We'll adopt this approach for the next question. Correct? Okay. Now here, we need to solve for this inequality. 4 minus x squared is greater than or equal to 0. So uh, this could be written as, uh, so it has two roots. Or let me sketch it directly. There are different ways of sketching this, right? So let me sketch here first and then find the solution. You can actually solve this using interval notation or method also. So basically we are looking for this function x squared which is flipped opening downwards move four units up right so i could always sketch this function as kind of like this it has zeros at square root of four plus and minus which is minus two and two right if i substitute zero here i get four here right so that is the function g of x. So clearly from here you can see that the positive portion is this and therefore we can write down the domain of this function as the interval which includes both of them from minus 2 to 2 right. So using the graph it is so simple correct. Now let us see how to solve this inequality. That is an additional question which I think will help many students. So what we can do here is that we can write 4 is greater than or equals to x squared. And now we square root it. Now what is square root of x squared? What is square root of x squared? What is square root of x squared? That's a big question. Square root of x squared is absolute value of x. Remember that part, right? So, so when you square root it, square root of 4 is 2. So we get 2 is greater than or equal to absolute value of x. Do you see that? This is a very, very critical step in solving inequalities. And that really means x is within plus and minus 2, right? That's what it means. So we have x, which is, you can say, greater than equal to minus 2 and is less than equals to 2. We get the same result. That is the domain and now you can write domain of this function is from minus 2 to plus 2. Do you see that? So, so it's very important to understand how to solve inequality involving x squared and that is to understand this portion. That square root of x squared is absolute x. That helps you to that's the key thing. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope this video gives you a good picture of finding domain of such functions and also some understanding in solving inequalities as all this will be required in this particular curriculum. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Feel free to post questions. Thank you and all the best.